everyone. I am very excited today because I have received a lovely gift. Um, lovely lady Candice has sent me this set of pastel tint pencils by Castle Arts. Came through Amazon, came in this um, box. I haven't opened it. I'm going to just open it for you on camera. I thought it would be great fun. Um, just a big thank you to Candice. I'm afraid I don't can't find your contact details. I'd love to thank you personally. So if you can get in touch with me on a personal message, I can just uh, send you a personal thank you, which I prefer to do than just doing it on, on a video. But if you don't want to and want to be a little bit more anonymous, that's fine. But just thank you so much. Now, I'm very excited, as I say, to uh, open the box. I haven't, you know, I've had it sitting here for a day waiting for an opportunity to film. And it's sort of the excitement builds, doesn't it? I can't get the box open. Oh, there we go. So here they are. Let's put that box on the floor can recycle it later so you can see they're plasticky wrapped I've got a very pretty picture on the front I'm going to try and get into this I don't have any scissors in here so that could be a problem hang on I've got a really sharp pencil there we go I wouldn't do that with a colored pencil it was just a, a, a graphite lead pencil so let's take off the wrapping and show you Oops the outside of the tin it's a little bit easier without the plastic on sorry all the rest I'll just throw it on the floor because I am that slovenly person don't have a bin in here <laughs> so we have our tin sorry my lights reflecting a little bit but I think for, it's a really dull day if I turn it off you won't see 48 premium pastel tint pencils a premium collection of delicately pink pigmented silky smooth colored pencils for a beautifully soft finish now what I'm interested in is are these going to be like these, the soft touch, or are they going to be more like the gold, which I don't happen to have by side of me? So let's have a little look at the back. It shows us the colours, but we'll play with the colours in a minute. I've got a picture lined up so we can try out all the colours. This deluxe set of 48 premium soft touch pastel tint pencils has silky smooth velvety soft leads with a large crayon, a permanent colour with light fast qualities offering both translucency and opacity. The non-toxic pencils are name numbered and colour coded for instant recognition. The tactile soft touch finish soft touch and self-coloured smooth wood casings allow for ease of manoeuvrability and sharpening. This extensive range of subtle pastel tints and tones can be easily layered, shaded and blended. Now one big difference I have found between the soft touch and the gold is the wood. In the soft touch, I find the wood's very splintery, and in the gold, it seems to sharpen like butter. I will struggle to open the tins. So we'll see what we get here. Oh, sorry. So we just look inside the lid. We've got all the pic pencils um, pictured there in an order. Whether that's the same order as in the tin, we I don't know. And there's something about Castle Club and about the picture. I won't read you that. I'll show you what we get. So we get another advert for Castle Club. I think I'm a member. I can't remember. Anyway, we have a leaflet, um, colour on product guide. We get these in every tin, I think. This is about the Fairy Queen, which is the picture on the front. I think it teaches you, I don't know, that looks a bit like an advert. There's the uh, list of the pencils. Oh, here, inside. oh, it smells this paper. Ooh, um, picture of how to make that. <laughs> I don't know. And we have a swatch chart. Now, the swatch chart for the gold was really rubbish. The order was terrible. I don't know if this one's going to be better. It looks better. Um, so I was really desperate to swatch them better in elsewhere, which um, now I've got um, a swatch book. I will um, do that instead, probably, rather than using that. Now, we've got a booklet. Let's have a quick look. Um, this information in here is similar to... Um, that page is similar to in the gold. This is a um, the range of colours. That's interesting. Oh, look, it's got a bit about colour charts, which is quite interesting with pastels. I don't know how well it works. Um, meanings of colours. Okay, something about shading could be useful. Um, pressures and strokes. Interesting. How to blend. Okay, and different things to use for blending. Um, this is interesting where you can give yourself different shades. I find getting greens is really useful because 
migraines always get small so although those are greens mixed together mixing green mixing yellows and blues to make new greens can be really useful because the greens I just go through them different techniques for texturing uh, tutorial to do a rose it's a little bit brief for my liking I can't just draw this fill this in this this and this okay no I, I like my tutorials to be more detailed as you will know from watching my tutorials I like to explain each step okay and we have a few other ones I think some of these templates you can download so you have to actually draw them you can print them first but that zebra is very pretty I have to say right we've got pencil should we dive in okay I'm just going to put that there Okay, so our first tray, we have our very lights. I'm not sure whether these are going to show up on a paper, on a white paper, but they may be nice to use for blending. And we're going to yellows, a few browns and oranges. Lovely pinks, look at those. And that's called Snow Waffle. I'm going to tell you all the names as we test them. I've got a lovely picture, which I think will work really well. And some greens. This one's quite dark, which is interesting. I love it. But um, I was thinking about, I'm just going to remove the tray. We've got these little strings and grip parts which we can use to get them out. Now what I have found, oop, with the gold, with the, um, the soft touch, they're really easy to get out. The gold pencils are slightly thicker and for some, they, the trays seem a bit too big for the case. Sorry, wonky. Look, we've got some more pinks and purples. I'm not sure I'm happy with this order, especially... It goes to there and then that starts there. I would want to reverse it. But anyway, I shall fiddle around with the order myself probably. My, my husband will wince and complain. <laughs> I do like to tease him. Look, I've changed the order of my pencils. He gets very upset. I'm very naughty. What we'll do is we'll move them aside and we'll grab the page. I'll show you. I thought a Lulu Mayo would be nice. Let's just move all that stuff that was in the tin. Oops. So I thought this Lulu Mayo page, I have been asked to do the ice creams from this book, I think. Someone said ice creams to me, I think they meant this page. And I thought, Lulu Mayo uh, sort of screams pastel to me. I think it's a really nice um, page to do pastels on. But I wasn't sure about shading, whether I'd need some darker shades. I've got my um, soft touch as well, in case we need to just darken a few areas. But I thought we would just go and play, really. I'm going to come in a bit closer, though. So you can see. There we go. And we're going to start with the lightest, actually, and just work through. And I'm just going to be interested to see if it shows up on the paper. Gosh, I cannot read that. It's white on cream Hang on, i'm going to put it right close to my face orchid white it says <laughs> i don't think it's gone gonna go blurred there's any way that you're gonna be able to read that anyway so it's a really pale white so i'm just gonna look for something where i think a white might look good um maybe this dribbly bit here i don't think it will show I can see the difference between this and the background just really slightly. Now I'm trying to work out whether these are more like the gold and the wood is definitely the quality of the Castle Arts gold. So I think these and it feels to me like they're the slightly thicker pencil. I'll just show I'll just compare it. One minute. I've got a This is one of the um non non golds. It's quite hard to compare the thickness of the... I don't know, I think they're quite similar. In fact, that one looks thicker. The ends look similar, but the wood definitely seems a bit better. It's always not that easy to turn until you actually sharpen it. So there's that one, very, very pale. But I wonder how it works on black. I don't have any black. Hmm, never mind. We're not really, most colouring books don't have black to colour on. Now again, we've got a very pale um, white on cream. This is called Mimosa, but if you look at the end, it is um, more yellowy. So where should we go? We'll do this bit of, of dribbly stuff here. And I'm not going to do too much fancy shading on this page, uh, particularly not at the minute. This one definitely um, shows up. It's a nice creamy colour. I really like this colour. 
I don't know how well it shows up on camera because I'm zoomed out and my light's a bit bright. It's such a um, dismal day. I've been out already and uh, it was it wasn't it was spitting a little bit with rain and uh, it was just <laughs> not not pleasant I every time I brushed past a plant I got wet but um, it was okay I uh, I got what I needed done now I will swatch these eventually myself but I think swatching things for you isn't so interesting as seeing it actually used in colour. So I'm adding some extra layers and I can definitely see that you can you can layer up and get some more colour which is great because sometimes with pastel pencils I found that doesn't always work. We've got another very pale colour. Oh excuse me, sorry I had to blow my nose. Um, this one's called Saffron. I still doubt you can see that. You can see the silvery um, piece around and the fact the barrel's the same colour as the as the lead, which I find quite interesting. And I think I'm just going to do this little chap. Um, basically what Lulu Mayo has done in this cute book, I haven't told you the name of the book, it's um, A Million Sweet Things. She has personified lots of little things, like these scoops of ice cream, which she's made to look like little bears. And um, also... Um, put little critters through the book as well so uh, it's a very cute um, book I have done I um, don't know if I've done many tutorials from here but I've done a flip through so there we go there he is I'm not trying to do too much shading or anything too fancy or else I'll be here forever but it's nice to just see the colours actually in use I think um, I haven't done his little snout we're actually going to do that with the next colour I think Oops. Again, very pale um, to read the writing. This is called Magnolia. Oh, gosh. I remember Magnolia. Everyone used to paint their house Magnolia in the 80s. And uh, I remember having a decorator who insisted that I had Magnolia. Now, Magnolia, to most Magnolia paint, has a bit of peach in, which I dislike. So I wanted cream. This is called Rosa, but it is very much a... Um, my lead slightly snapped on this one. But so uh, that's okay. I know these ha this happens in transit. Um, and we'll go elsewhere. Um, mm, we'll go here. We'll do this guy's body. It's a little bit awkward because it's broken, but I could sharpen it, couldn't I? But I found a nice edge. They feel very smooth to colour with. You can probably hear that they're not that dry which is nice they feel more to me like the gold rather than the um, um, soft touch I like both so really doesn't matter but it might explain the higher price tag because I think these are dearer almond rose I wasn't sure whether the increase in price was really, I'm going to do that, um, to do with the um, fact they were new and a sort of novelty rather than the quality, but I think it's the quality. This is called Petunia Pink, but it looks very orange to me, but I don't think, I don't mind. Um, where should we go? We'll do these stripes. Um, yeah. So I think, yes, it's the quality. I think the gold were always sort of set, meant to be slightly better quality. And as I say, when you sharpen them, they the wood is very much better quality, that's for sure. And of course, we know that wood can make a difference if we think about our Prismacolors. When the wood splits, the um, it does affect how well the lead sharpens. Now, this is quite a dark colour. I wouldn't say this was pastel. Um, it's called Coral Blush. It seems quite dark, but I don't mind. It just seems rather dark for a pastel. I'm a bit wondering how I'm going to colour these strawberries um, in pastel. But uh, I was wondering whether to use some of this orange. Let's try on one. You know, I think if we put some pink on top, it would work. But actually, I might just colour this one orange. It's a nice colour. 
and it isn't as bright as I thought it would be looking at the barrel and the and even at the lead. He's got a little smiley face. I might actually like to do all the um, strawberries in this colour because although it's slightly orangey, I think it works. You may not agree, but I'm going to keep them all the same colour. So I'm not... Um, I think having um, got my whole buying pastel set, something I've learned from those is you can't always layer it up to get shadow. Like here under where the leaves are, I would want it slightly darker. And it does go down a little bit darker, but what's that? Oh, it's his hand. Um, but it might be worth combining this with your other um, pencils to, if you want a much darker area, you know, maybe um, a, a, a darker red or um, black or something like that. It really depends what you're colouring, for one thing, and uh, whether you want lots of shading. And there are different shades of the same colour in the set, of course. So you could use those if you want to. That's probably going to benefit from another layer. I don't know why I thought all the strawberries needed to be the same colour, but I just decided they did. So I'm sorry, <laughs> just colouring the same thing over and over. But I guess if you're colouring along, then you might appreciate that. And uh, you know what we're doing. These are really lovely. I feel really lucky to have them. So thank you so much, um, Candice, for these. They are gorgeous. Blushing rose. Now, I think this is quite similar to this colour, so I want to move it away. What about this heart? Should we do it? Maybe it's a bit orangey. Maybe we might rather do the heart in pink. Uh, perhaps I'll do... Hmm. Where should we go? Maybe just a small bit, like these dots. It's got a nice colour, isn't it? Do you like it? That's cute. Now we're moving on to some pinks. We've got we've got some pinks here, and then on our other row we've got other pinks. So amaryllis. Now. Where should we go with this pink? Oh, we do the heart. Amaryllis is a plant, isn't it? I remember um, my mum used to grow them at Christmas. You used to sometimes be gifted one in a box and it would come with a pot. And it, some No, it wouldn't come with a pot. She had a pot. And you would sort of grow it in water and the roots would go down into water. And the roots would be fascinating to watch grow as well as the top and it would grow into a gorgeous flower. Maybe you've got had them or seen them. Now we've got a very pretty looking pink. Now, foxglove. Now I'm not into pink, but this one looks really pretty. Where should we go? Uh, we'll do this bow. I always think foxgloves are purple. I know they're not, but they're really dark normally. <laughs> but look, you can layer that up. That is pretty. So... As a non-pinky person, that is the sort of pink that I would like. We're actually, we're planning our kitchen um, peach cream at the minute. And uh, interestingly, we've decided that one of the um, doors, we're going to have two colours of doors. It's quite pale, isn't it? Um, I guess it is called cream, peach cream. Um, one of the door colours is going to be a, a pink which is interesting, but it's, I I think from the brochure, it's called Deep Heather, so I think it's uh, almost sort of purpley pink, you know, quite ready colour, but um, it's very hard to know exactly how it's going to look in our setting, so rather than going to the showroom and trying to see it, I've asked um, the, the um, sales lady is going to come over and bring some samples for us to have a look at. So this is called Snow Waffle. I love the name. It's a pinky brown almost. I'm going to use it for his nose because I think it will go well. Oh, <laughs> it's so cute. Look at that. It's a nice colour. Now we have quite a dark colour coming up. This is called Carnation. 
and I can't tell it looks browny pink like a there's a prisma color a bit like this I can't remember is it called um, grade rose or something not sure not that familiar with my prismas yet um, I think we'll do the mm, no what should we do indecisive girl we'll do him I know he looks like a penguin but or a snowman or something but we need to colour them in don't we so let's do him it's a quite an interesting colour I can't even really decide quite what it is a carnation it's definitely a sort of pinky colour isn't it but it's a sort of pinked brown almost and you can see on this large area how it's going down quite smoothly I'm not really trying to make it I'm not doing little circles very much or anything putting much effort into making it smooth I'm going to try and make him a bit darker around the edge though if I can so I can layer it up a little bit particularly at the bottom look his little belly button <laughs> it's cute right now we have some browns and I need to do our cones with these so we have what's called a cream rose but it looks brown to me I'm going to do this bit of the waffle cone it's quite pale isn't it but that's okay now I'm not sure whether our waffle cones would really be this colour be a little bit warmer probably oh, so there are different colours aren't there it depends what type of cone you have what's all this bit? Should we do it in the same colour? I'm just looking at what I've got. I think I will. Just making sure I get into all those corners. I'm going to do this bit too. Now our stand that we have here for our um, cones, which you can't see the bottom of, um, I'm not going to colour necessarily in these. I don't think... Oh, oh I can. There's some greys. We'll do it in like silver. That'd be fun. Can you see all of this? just move it up. So for a cone like this I would normally shade the edges and actually Lulu Mayo has put in a few dots for us so if we do a little bit more on each edge it will just give it a more rounded feel and you can even do that with these which is quite handy. There we go. I don't know how well that's come up in the camera but now we've got another brownish colour which is called Apricot Twist. I like the names. Do you like the names? They're very cool. This looks more browny. I'm going to try and fade it towards the middle. I think it'll be easier than what I did on the last one. Putting layering it up after. You can probably hopefully see that. See, it's quite difficult in this light today. It's it's quite I'm quite pleased that today it's like this because um um the weekend um we had all the Queen's Jubilee celebrations and there were lots of people having um street parties and also there were lots of people in London for the various events that happened and it seemed to stay dry in London at least. Here we had mixed weather. We didn't have a, any, we had a few local things going on, but uh, we just wanted to watch it all on the telly, which was fun. Nice name for this one, Candy Tuft. And we'll do this comb. It's another, I think this one's paler. We may struggle to uh, see shading, but what you could do, of course, is use these three together to get a difference in, in colour but yeah they are very pale but that is the idea of a pastel tone pencil isn't it and I'm trying to layer it up a little bit at the edges and less in the middle And I definitely think there are pastel tones missing from the castle art sets. They are very dark, so it's quite nice to have a set which isn't quite so vibrant. Now we have something called Inca Gold. I'm going to use this for the stars, I think. Um, can you see them all? Let's just move you down. Try and remember to move you back up. And this looks very vibrant to me. 
I'm not, I'm thinking this isn't really pastel, but it's a nice colour, isn't it? I don't know how well you can see, I'm quite far away. I usually worry about you being far away and then when I edit the video, it's usually okay. But if I'm trying to show you a specific colouring technique, obviously it's nicer if I can be a bit closer to you, but we're only testing colours and uh, I will show you it a little bit closer in a bit so you can see. Oh, I just hit my remote control, sorry. There we go. Now we're moving on to greens. So we have got a begonia, which is a rather pretty green. Oh, we've got a cone now, which we haven't, oh well, we'll have to find a different colour for that. Um, what should we do? Hat stripes. It's quite a grey green, isn't it? Okay, we need to do the leaves on the strawberries, I'm aware of that. We have got a cowslip. Perhaps we'll do the strawberry leaves with this. I think it's quite pale, but the strawberries are pale. Again, this is quite a grey green, I would say. Now, some people I know all sharpen their pencils before they test them or use them. I haven't done that with these. Um, I don't tend to. I like to use them just as they are. And I don't find um, they suffer from not being, um, um, not being sharpened. But it may depend on the pencil. It's a personal thing, I think. There we go. Next, whoops. Next we have a sunflower, which is a strange name for this colour, but anyway, um, we'll do it here. Is that the stripe? That's a lovely colour. I would name that olive. <laughs> but hey ho, it doesn't matter, does it? Now we have a juniper lime. And we're going to do this bow. Oops, my pieces of paper that are underneath the page are all moving. Push them back in. That's quite um quite dark, actually. Interesting. This one looks minty, what's it called? Day Lily. Day Lily. Strange name. Um I'm gonna do this this good chappy. He's upside down. If you look you can see his um his bow tie, his eyes are at the bottom. This is quite a pale one, isn't it? But again, it could be layered up a bit. There we go. You can get, you can get some extra um, depth of colour if we layer it up. But of course, you know, to remember it is pastel tone and we have what do we have here savannah and I'm going to do his nose in the savannah it's a bit darker okay that's the first tray done we're moving on to the second tray and this looks very neon this is called you can't see very well it's called lime coral um I'm thinking here. The barrel looks more fluorescent than the pencil, but it is still quite neon-y for a pastel. But I find that is very much the case um, with some. Like the um, gel pens I've got, the pastel ones look seem very neon-y. But again, they're castles, so maybe someone gets a bit confused. I don't know, but it's not as neony as a uh, as some as like a highlighter pen or anything. I think it works well within the within the palette, so it's okay. And this one as well, it's a green. I think you won't be able to read the name. I can't. Oh, gosh, jasmine 
it's called. I had to really struggle to see that. Um, where should we go with this one? We'll do these round things. I don't know what these are. Oh, that is quite bright, isn't it? Someone did tell me there are a few neon -y ones in this set. So uh, I think this is the one they meant. But that's okay. Now we, this one's very pretty. This is called Green Flower. And we will do this guy's hat. This. It's a nice bluey green. It's quite dark. I wouldn't say that was that pastely. But that's okay. It's pretty. We have a similar colour here called Viridi, Viraldi, Viridi. I don't know. We're going to do this one. You can see how close it is in colour. Okay. Now, what do we have? We have Angelica. Um, where should we go? We need to spread our grains out a little bit. We'll, put, we'll do this little one's top of the this bit. And that's another sort of quite grey-green, I would say. An interesting colour. It's quite useful having similar tones because you can put, use them together or, um, you know, blend them together as well if you want to. This one. This is Bayberry. Bayberry? Bayberry. I'm going to do the bobbles. I'm doing a round and round movement here and leaving some white so it looks fluffy. It's a nice colour, isn't it? And that one. I don't think we've got any more. Yep. And here we have a jade. Um. Should we go? I think we'll do this little chappy. Yeah. This is a sort of grey green, almost bluey. I'm not sure. He's like a seal, isn't he? I don't know what he's doing in a pile of ice cream. Just having a rest. <laughs> he's going to eat that strawberry, do you think? I haven't done the star, we haven't got any more yellows left. I may have to go back and grab a yellow. That's better. It wasn't going down very well, but now I've just overcoloured it, it looks fine. It's probably me. I probably wasn't applying an even pressure. I can't work out what this colour is at all. <laughs> Maybe it would be water. I think it looks quite good for a little seal. Now we have, oops, I can't get it out. Periwinkle, nice colour. We'll do his nose. That's a nice colour. Now we have a delphinium. Oops, I think I'm going to do that in here. Now what I think might be very useful to do is to swatch these, swatch the gold set and the soft touch and then work out which ones work are close colours so that if say I wanted to really shade um, an area here, say I want this bit really dark down the side of here, then I can dig into my other castle art sets and find one that will work to just darken that edge. You could use a black, obviously, but I think that would be too much with the pastel tones. So it would be nice to know what sort of other shades we have that would just work together with it. Blue Poppy. Um, I'm going to do this chap. 
So uh, yeah, that's that's something I might try and play around with a little bit. Oh, we've got a bobble there, look, hanging off his hat. But because this one, for example, if I if I build up the colour, it's not going to go that dark because it's a really pale colour. So there might be a darker blue, grey blue that I could work in with it to do some shading if I wanted to. You may not want to shade, you may just want to leave them plain, which is completely fine. Now this is a very pretty looking colour. This is called Blue Daisy. It reminds me of the um, one of the um, ones from the Holbein set, but I can't think of the name of it. I'm going to go for this bit. To try and avoid the sprinkles, we'll do them in a different colour. So, yes, they're going on really nicely, I think. I'm finding they're pretty easy to get a nice even tone um, across, which is nice. I have got some pencils where that's quite difficult. I mean, obviously, it does depend on the paper. Lulu Mayer's paper isn't the best paper, but it's, you know, it's reasonable quality and interestingly her paper is white which allows you to see these pastel colours better as some papers are, are cream so they would work differently on those but uh, that's okay excuse me I'd be interested to see whether these work on black or not some pencils even though you think they might they just don't but I find actually if I put the black background on a pastel picture blue mist I can end up looking very wishy-washy so uh, have to, that's not the best choice with that orange never mind <laughs> so yes yeah, so sometimes um, a black background with a pastel just makes the pastel look washed out so it's not always the best sometimes it's better to just do a really vibrant reds and yellows and things like that and that works better So it just depends on the picture and how much, how what, how deep the pastels are. If you're using something like that, it's too pale. But something like this, like I'm using now, it could be vibrant enough to work. It's just a matter of experimenting a bit. And it can take confidence, I know. Especially if you're working in a book. You don't want to mess up the page by experimenting. I have done that. I've experimented in books and been not too happy. But, you know, just... Is that his tail? Yeah, I've decided that it is. Um, so, yeah, I just do it. I, I, I don't like experimenting on scrap paper. I like just getting on with it. I don't think that is part of him, but I don't know what other colour to do it got another blue here, Labelia, and we're going to do, where should we go, I've got a hat to do up here, oh that's a nice colour, there we go, and we have a blue bell, um, we do some, we do some stripes on here, I'm sure everyone's going to want to eat this blue ice cream. I'm sure it's delicious. I'm assuming this guy at the top here, he's on skis. So we need to colour those in too, don't we? What's that? Oh, that's the foot of the critter. Okay. This is our last blue, and it is Larkspur. Um, where should we go with this? Um, his nose. There we go. This reminds me of the wisteria in the um, in the Holbeins, but it's actually called Hydrangea. And I shall go. Hmm, this chap. Just looking at how many I've got left and what I've got left to do as well. But I'm definitely going to make this arm, um, this outside bit, a different colour to his. His tummy and face as if he's a sort of because this guy's got black this is really messy coloring hang on let's tidy that up a bit there we go that's better okay now we have 
have another purpley tone. We have a heather, it's very pretty. I'm going to do this one here. We're going to get this picture finished, I think. We will not have every item in a different colour though, because I'm going to run out of colours, I think, before we finish the picture. So I should just finish it off with a few with a few other choices and then it'll be done. I probably won't do a background on this picture just because um, it's pastel-y. I think it might be too strong any background for the colours. I might just let the colours stand out for themselves. There we go. I've got another one. This is pretty. Oh, this is wisteria. I think we'll go back over here. Maybe we do this little chap's face. Oh, I don't know if that was a good choice. <laughs> oh dear. He looks a little bit hmm, strange. Poor chappy. Oh, never mind. I like the name of this one. Tickle Pink. Fabulous name. And we'll do this bit here. I think it goes quite oddly goes well with this green. They're both sort of odd shades. This is almost raspberry, I think. I like it. I do often wonder whether I just see colours really differently and I'm saying, oh, it's this colour, and I'm going, no, it's not. Um, Camellia. It's pink. We've got a heart here, so we're going to do this heart in the pink. Wow, that's quite a, uh, a, a Barbie pink, I would say. Now that isn't my choice of pink. That's the sort of pink that I'm not so keen on, but I do use it. And I think it can look really pretty on certain flowers and certain things. But those are the sorts of pinks that I tend to use less of. But actually, I did a picture at the weekend with pinks like this, and together with blues and purples. And in the end, I thought it looked really nice. So you just can't tell, can you? Now we have a much paler pink, which is much more up my street. We have Jelly Bean great name. Where should we go? Should we go here? Mm, no, we'll go here. Oh, I like that colour. Look how cute you look. Look how cute you look. <laughs> okay, now this is an interesting colour. It is called Pearl, but it's a sort of um, greyed pink, which is, I find fascinating. Um, Hmm, where should we go for you? I think oh, my paper's coming a bit loose. I think we'll go here and do this. Now this is a, a colour that I wouldn't mind having on a wall in my house. Now left now we have two greys. So we're gonna finish the we're gonna use one of them for the stand. And so the other one are used for the skis. And then we'll finish off all the other little bits and bobs and critters and bits. And then um, do the silver last. So we've got, this is the winter berry, which I'm going to use for the stand. I'm just going to put that on the side. We have this one, which is lighter, but slightly more brown. It's called peach rose. I'm going to use that for the skis. It's very pale. Then I'm going to fill in all the other bits and pieces and come back to that last colour in a minute. So our, let's go through, we've got an ice cream cone, so I'm going to grab a brown. I'm going to use the apricot twist actually for that. We've got a bobble, and I'm trying to remember what we used for the bobble, whether we could use the same thing. I can't remember, I think it might have been the bayberry, that's what I'm going to use. Yeah, it was. Yay. We've got a hat up here. I'm going to do that hat in a pink. And I'm going to use the foxglove. Mm -hmm. 
are we? We've got the centre of these. Now these are quite a neony green. I think I might just go in with a with the green flower and just do a darker green in the middle. It's actually the same colour as the hat, I think. It'll be okay. There we go. And then Oh, I just put that pencil away in the wrong place and confused myself. <laughs> We've got some sprinkles on here. I'm going to do this um, pink, this bright camellia pink. Quite small, but the pencils hold their point quite well, so that's good. Okay, now we have a star, so I'm going to try and use the brightest yellow, which is the saffron can't see the name. It's not as bright as this one but it we need it to look a little bit different. I think we use it there but never mind. Didn't really plan very well. It was just it's really just an experimental page but I think they look fun in these pastel colours. Now he's got stripes so I'm going to put that bit in there. And that bit there and then we'll do the stripe I think in an orange. I'm going to use the petunia pink which looks to me like an orange and I'm marrying it down quite hard. I've missed a petal there. Now I have a feeling I did those. Did I do them in begonia? No, I oh, won't. Well. Hat. Um, hmm. Mm -hmm. What do we do? We'll do this one. We'll do the periwinkle if I can get it out. It doesn't want to come out. Ugh! I nearly dropped it then. It was very, it was very still and then very lively. I think that hat might be this colour. No, it's not quite. I've gone out of the line. Sorry, little little buddy. And up here, I'm thinking blue there as well. I'm going to go with the bluebell. I don't remember using the bluebell before. Did I? I must have done. I don't remember the name. Maybe I didn't tell you the name. I don't know. Anyways, we shall fill this in. I think it's there, isn't it? And now we've got this little chap here, and I want to do his face in a sort of browny colour. Oops, so I'm going to use the candy tuft for that. He looks like a bear. I'm thinking his little snout would be really pale, so we'll go for this one, which you can't see, nor can I. It's the mimosa. Just about managed to see it. Mm -hmm. Put that in his ears. And then I'm thinking a pink hat. Mm -hmm. Let's go with the amaryllis for his hat. Um, I have, we have got to do those sprinkles, and I think that's it. Now I was thinking those sprinkles. Might be nice in a pinky shade. So I'm going to use the jelly bean for these. Now I haven't planned this picture at all. It's a bit of a jumbled mess. I've done it quite plain colouring so that you can just see the colours of the pencils. So if you were wanting to do this one, you might want to spend a little more time. Now when I do silver, do a bit of a colour and then fade it to white to give some shine but silver is much more effective if you have a big difference between your dark and your light so I would tend to use a really dark grey here and then a paler shade towards the middle but we've only got one shade so I'm just going to do the best that I can and I'm just layering it up more on the edges and less in the centre just to try and make it look shiny 
And it's really simple with just one pencil. It's more effective with several. But with only one shade, that's all we can do. And as I say, you can obviously use other shades of, um, use other pencils with the together with the pastel ones to get um, more, more depth of colour. Um, try and decide what to do here. I think we'll do this bottom bit first. And we'll do it in the same way. So fade it towards the middle. Oh, sorry. I've got an itch on my nose. <sighs> I think a hair was tickling. So fading it towards the centre. And then here, I'm thinking we'd get a little shadow here, but this would be darker than that. So I'm thinking what I'd probably do is make this dark, fade it up, and then we'll go and we'll do the centre part in a minute. Okay, a noisy bird outside. I've got a tree outside the window. I can't I'm just looking, I can't see anything in there. It sounds like a budgie. I think there are wild budgies around here. I suspect it's just a magpie. And now around here, so a dark bit all the way around and then just fade it down each little bit. Now this would look a lot more effective in a darker pencil, but you know, the whole point is we're using the pastels. So, yeah, that's quite fun. So you probably, looks to you, like there's no colour. Whoops, wrong way. Like there's no colour there at all. <laughs> but there we go. Let's try and get that all in shot so you can have a look. Let's remove those bits of scrap paper. It looks a bit messy. And uh, and show you. So those are the um, trays of pencils. I just, oops, let's bring that one across so you can see it. There we go, and put the grey back in. So as I say, I may um, change the um, pencils a little bit. There we go, you can see them all now. So you get the idea of how they go down on the page, hopefully. Um, yeah, so as I say, I may um, change the order in the tin, you know what I'm like. Um, I've probably swatched them. Um, I might swatch them on the um, card that came in, which I've to the side um, or I may swatch them in my swatch book I'll probably do both to be honest eventually um, when I get a bit of time in the summer um, I might get some time when we've got the builders in and I can't record because there's banging I might then do a bit of swatching and things like that but uh, that's me for today I hope that was fun it gave you an idea of what's in the set what it looks like in a picture and I hope I've given you a few tips for sort of how you might shade if you were using them um, as I say, I would probably, you could combine some of the darker and lighter ones, so like this and these two, and that sort of thing. Um, but also you can use much darker pencils from your other sets to bring in as well. But uh, I think that looks really quite cute um, in all the pastel tones. So uh, there we go. So thank you very much for watching. Um, I hope that was interesting for you. Um, it was certainly fun for me. Another big thank you and shout out to Candice for this beautiful set. I will treasure them and I know I will use them a lot. So I've, I have a few pastel pencils and I'm missing things like browns and greys. So it's really nice to have that. And I can use them in combination with my other pastel pencils too. Because I never found a set that doesn't work with another set. Maybe the exception with the metallic pencils. I might not use those with regular ones trying to blend them, but I might use them on the same page. So anyway, so that's brilliant. So I'm really pleased. So thank you for those. Still very excited. And uh, so have a lovely day. Um, thank you for watching. Um, please do um, subscribe and like if you enjoyed. And um, some very kind people are sharing my videos too, which is brilliant. Or if you do colour along with me ever and you put it on social medias, if you could just mention that it was from my video, that just helps people find me. And I just want to help spread the word about colouring and fun 
and that sort of thing so um hopefully that can help but obviously if you're sharing your coloring that's all brilliant too because that's still sharing the love of coloring with as many people as we can which is what this is all about anyway enough waffle have a fantastic day thank you so much for watching and happy coloring